Hi friends, Itheria here, and my throat is feeling a little sore, so do forgive me if I don't sound quite as normal or, I don't know, as bright and lively. I'm trying to, I guess, be a little more kind to it. But anyway, today I want to share with you some low-effort ways to make an income in Final Fantasy XIV. Please be aware that this is not a get-rich-quick video by any means. These are steady income streams that can build up gil for you over time. And as I said, they are also low effort, so they're going to be easy to do or they're not going to take a lot of time to do. Speaking of timing, the way that you can make big bucks off of some of these methods does have to do with your timing, and I will explain that wherever it is pertinent. So, with that said, I have 10 ideas for you to make money in Final Fantasy XIV that don't take a whole lot of effort, so let's just get into it. For number one, we're starting with grand company seals because this is kind of the basis for other money-making methods on the list. So getting grand company seals is pretty easy, there's multiple ways to get them, but it all comes down to turning in gear. You get the seals from gear, so really, there's multiple ways to get gear and then turn that in to the Grand Company Personnel Officer under the Expert Delivery tab. And basically, you should always be rolling on dungeon drops so that you can turn those in for Grand Company seals. Once you've gotten your seals, you can exchange them for a number of different goods. The best things to use your seals on are in-demand crafting items like potash or coke, or things like glamour prisms and dispellers. I would also like to use a section to ask crafters in the comment section, what materials from grand companies do you use the most? Because I know that potash and coke sell pretty well, but I'm not really very versed in what mats are good and bad, so I really don't know if I'm missing anything, but from the grand company seals, like, is there anything else besides coke and potash that are good crafting items, like, to sell? <laughs> Anyways, on to number two. Number two is retainers. So you can send your retainers out on missions called ventures once per hour, and they'll bring back gear, housing, or venture coffers. If you get really lucky, you can open the venture coffer and you'll get a rare die like jet black or pure white, which you can sell for roughly 400k. So for that reason, it's good to send them out as often as humanly possible to increase your chances of getting those venture coffers. And of course, the gear you can use for what we said about number one, the grand company seals, and the housing items, some of them are just worth money and you can sell them and other ones are kind of not really worth anything. Also, you can do 12-hour ventures, and these aren't really a bad idea either because your retainer might bring back a rare minion or an in-demand crafting item, maybe one that's even a little bit more expensive. I do, however, prefer to do the one-hour ventures myself because my retainers are really undergeared and I, uh, I really can't be bothered to fix that, so I just do the one-hour ventures because it doesn't matter what your gear is on your retainer. So yeah. For number three, I want to talk about tombstones. So you'll naturally be building up tombstones if you do any sort of battle content, whether you're doing roulettes, trials, whatever, pretty much everything is going to give you tombstones. Elegant tombstones of poetics can be exchanged in the Crystarium for old gear pieces, so I would recommend that you buy a bunch of rings from whatever the highest item level poetics gear is. So right now that would be the augmented Crypticker's gear. And then you just repeat number one on this list. Uh, you can also make money by selling the astronomy tombstones, is that what they're called? <laughs> the red ones. And this will be true for any of like the middle tombstone of any patch. And once again, you want to buy crafting materials from the NPC and sell them. My advice would be to take a screenshot of all the different mats and look on the market board to see which one is selling for the most. The prices can fluctuate, but things like the Hanish Varnish currently are usually a good choice to sell. Number four is Island Sanctuary. And this is probably the most passive of all the income streams on the list. So a lot of us have already leveled our islands to max, and once you do, you really only need to spend about five minutes per day setting your workshop. The rest is all automated by the mammoths. 
I highly recommend joining the Overseas Casuals Discord to get the best calorie output from your workshop, or you can join my Discord, link in the description, and check the Island Sanctuary channel because I have it linked to show the recommendations from the Overseas Casuals Discord. So how is money actually made? You just need to use your stockpile of calories to buy things like crafting and gathering materia. Materia is kind of evergreen, but it does fluctuate in price quite a bit. And if you want to make big bank, like really, really good money, then you really want to hold on to your calories or the materia that you buy with them. I would, I would say just leave them as calories because you want to see which materia is going to be the most popular, but then you have to sell them at the right time. So what is the right time? Well, a good example is 6.3. When 6.3 first dropped, with it came new best-in-slot crafting and gathering gear. So this means that basically everyone was upgrading to this gear, and guess what they needed? They needed materia. And because it's a crafted gear, they were able to also overmeld this gear. So I actually recommend selling the nines over the tens because they cost fewer calories, but a lot of the nines will cost almost the same amount as the tens on the market board, or maybe like 3k less. But people tend to buy more of them because they're used for overmelding. And finally, one more way to make money with your calories is rare dyes. You can buy a number of rare dyes like Cherry Red, Gunmetal Black, or Pearl White. So all in all, Island Sanctuary is honestly an incredible way to make money because once you've maxed out, which in my opinion doesn't take that much work in itself, there is almost no work required from you once you've reached the max level, and there's not going to be another patch for Island Sanctuary upgrades, probably for quite some time. So you might be able to just passively do nothing for like a couple months and be stocking up calories and just biding your time to sell materia and make a crap load of money. All right, number five. This is the one you have all been waiting for. I begged you to do a hunt train in my last video. I said it would make you money and people were like, what do you mean? I'm going to explain why right now in this video. Hunt trains will give you poetics, capped and uncapped tombstones, nuts, and clusters. We've already talked about the tombstones and how you can make money off of those, so let's talk about nuts. After you've gotten all of the fun mounts and minions that you want to get with nuts, you should head over to the Crystarium again. Go to the hunt NPC, Xyle by the Tenemos Rookery and trade your nuts for Ronkin Rings. So it could be like Ronkin Ring of Healing, of Casting, Offending, of whatever the heck you want. Then you trade them for Grand Company Seals and I think that you can see where this is going. It's going back to number one. So that's the nuts. But the clusters that you get are perhaps the most lucrative item that you get from doing hunt trains because they can be used to buy battle materia. Once again, if you want to make big money, then it's going to be all about timing. So I would recommend sitting on your clusters and building up a big stockpile of them. Like I said before, usually the right time to sell is going to be whenever there is new gear coming out, especially like things like new crafted gear, because everybody is going to be getting that crafted gear to help them prepare for different stuff like a raid tier and so they're going to be dumping a lot of money both into the gear itself and into the materials for that gear. When the Renesada gear first came out before uh, the current raid tier, just right before that current, like a week before the current raid tier, I made about 10 million gil in about two days maybe just selling the materia that I'd gotten from Hunt Train Clusters, and I didn't even have that many clusters. I would say I had like 200 or less, maybe somewhere between 100 and 200 clusters. So if you do a Hunt Train or two every week, like you don't even have to go hard on this, like you could literally do like one a week for a while, you're going to be stocking up these clusters, and then you can end up making a lot of money if you're patient. And you may be wondering, like, why not do alliance raids for clusters? It's not worth your time. For one alliance raid, and by the way, you have to be the in-demand role for that, but for one alliance raid, you're only getting, like, I don't know, I think you get, like, one of the tens and one of, and two of the, the nines, and you're going to spend, like, 30 minutes in there. However, one hunt train usually does anywhere between 14 and 16 marks. Each mark has a 50% chance to drop 
each type of cluster, unless it is an S rank, but most hunt trains are killing A ranks. And that may not seem like a great chance, but I promise you, you are going to get more clusters from doing hunt trains than you are from doing alliance raids. And even if you weren't, the other rewards, because you are going to get nuts and tombstones every time, the other rewards really, really make it worth it. What a lot of people do is they farm their weekly tombstones doing hunt trains because you get you can like max out your green tombstones pretty quickly doing hunt trains, but you're also getting all of these other rewards that are super worthwhile. So hunt trains are like one of the most underrated things in the game and like smart people do hunt trains. Smart people do hunt trains. So there we go. I feel like my next five are not quite as good as the first five, but I'm still going to talk about them. I'm going to try and go a little more quickly now, but I talk a lot, so we'll see about that. <laughs> Anyways, number six is beast tribes. So obviously beast tribes are kind of a pain in the butt to actually level up, but a lot of people are already doing them anyway or have already done older beast tribes. So if you have or are doing that, then you can take advantage of the stuff that they sell, which is mainly crafting materials and dyes. And there are a lot of dyes that are exclusive to beast tribes, so people will pay more for them on the market board because they're too lazy to do the beast tribes themselves or maybe they don't even know where to get those dyes. So they just go to the market board and they buy them. And interestingly enough, you can actually get both soot black and snow white dye from the Ixel. They don't sell for that much more than they do just for the shop selling price, but it's still like a really easy way to just make money. Just go buy some up. Of course, the Ixel does require you to be a crafter or a gatherer, and I said this video wasn't really gonna be crafting and gathering stuff, but there are a lot of beast tribes in general that sell exclusive dyes, and the Ixel was just the first one that came to mind, and they are a lower level, so it might be a little bit easier, because you can kind of just level up doing the deliveries with the Ixels, like literally just deliver stuff, like go buy it off the market board and deliver it, so it's not that bad. Number seven is buying furnishings from NPCs and then selling them on the market board for more. I personally do feel kind of bad to do this because I feel like I'm taking advantage of people, but I guess technically you're not. I mean, it is a decent way to make money, but I remember when I was a noob and I didn't know any better. By the way, if you hover over something and it says shop selling price, that means you can get it from an NPC. So it's not worth more than what the NPC sells it for. That's how you avoid this. But anyway, at the time I didn't know what that meant. And I bought these like purple flower vases for like 20k and you can go and buy them in Gridania for 5k. So I totally got ripped off. I just didn't know any better. But there are some people that do know better, but they still buy that stuff because they have a lot of money and it's more convenient for them to just buy it off the market board and instead of like teleporting away from the house they're currently working on decorating. So I don't know if you feel like doing this, you can do it if you don't feel like you're swindling people, but there it is. Number eight is wolf marks and trophy crystals. Many of you are probably farming PvP in order to get this series rewards, and you might find yourself inundated with wolf marks to the point where there's not really much left for you to buy, so you can spend them on materia and glamour prisms to sell. And you can also turn the trophy crystals into like I don't know if it's wolf collars. Either way, you can they can be turned into wolf marks somehow. So if you want to keep selling glamour prisms with them, you can do that. Number nine is selling treasure maps. Yes, I marketed this video as making money without crafting, but technically this is not crafting, it's gathering. You can gather one map per day and sell it on the market board, but if you don't have a gatherer, but you tend to do the weekly wondrous tales because they are good for leveling up other characters, then you can get a map as the reward. But if you can gather, it's pretty good to do this whenever a new map first drops because they usually sell for 100k or more, but after a couple weeks the price does go down to about 30k, but still it literally takes 5 minutes or less to gather a map, so I do think it's still worthwhile. Uh, and of course you can make money actually using the maps, and I don't know if I'd consider that low effort or not, like it kind of is because the maps are really easy, like the map dungeons are pretty darn easy to do, but it does take groups like hours to do it, and you might only make a couple hundred k off of it, so you know, you can do the map, you can sell the map, there it is. And finally, number 10 is bicolor gemstones. Many people farm fates to get access to some of the cooler items available via bicolor gemstones. But if you're waiting for a queue to pop, farming fates can be a decent way to level up your characters or just pass the time while still doing something productive while you wait for that queue. 
I actually leveled up some of my healers when Endwalker dropped as I was working on maxing the Shared Fates, and it wasn't that bad of EXP. You can get bicolor gemstones from both Shadowbringers and Endwalker's Fates, but unfortunately, none of the Fates in previous expansions drop bicolor gemstones. If you are purposely farming for money this way, then I would say it's kind of high effort and low return, but if it's something that you're kind of like doing anyway, or just doing when you're queuing for a dungeon or a roulette or whatnot, then I do think it's worthwhile because you can use the buy colors to sell whatever is marketable, such as crafting materials like Birkin and Sap, or the buy color gemstone vouchers that you can use to get the wire mount or the black angel wings. So that is everything. Those are all of my methods for making money in 14 that don't take a whole lot of effort. Some of them are obviously better than others, but now you have options. I hope this video was helpful to you, and if it was, then please consider leaving a sacrifice for Lord Algorithm in the form of a like, comment, share, or subscribe. As always, thank you so much for watching. And, and also, please comment, how do you make money? I, I want to know. Okay. Okay, bye!